Hey everyone, today I have a biography for you. A biography is the true story of someone's life and their accomplishments. The title of the book is The Boy Who Invented the Popsicle, the cool science behind Frank Epperson's famous frozen treat. The authors are Anne Renault and Milan Pavlovic. The publisher is Kids Can Press. I want to be a great inventor. Frank William Epperson knew what he wanted to be when he grew up. And everyone in Frank's family knew too. Because in case they forgot, he reminded them. Often. When not busy with his schoolwork or chores, Frank could be found adventuring with his brother Cray practicing his cornet, or learning magic tricks. He also pondered very important questions. Hmm, do goldfish sleep? Hmm, do ants have ears? Hmm, do woodpeckers get headaches from pecking all day? Hmm, he wondered a lot. But Frank's favorite pastime was inventing. And to invent, Frank knew he had to experiment. So off he would go to his laboratory. Well, his back porch. There he doodled and designed. He tinkered and tested, analyzed and scrutinized. By the time Frank was 10 years old, he had already masterminded his first invention, a hand car with two handles. At twice the speed of a regular one-handled hand car, Frank whizzed down the streets of his neighborhood. Hot dog! Bird says, what? Frank also experimented with liquids. And one of the cool things about this book is he tells you about his experiments. Why won't they play together? How to do your own experiment with liquids. So throughout the books, you're going to have a lot of little easy science experiments that you might try to get permission from mom or dad to do this summer. Pretty cool, huh? But what Frank loved most was experimenting with flavored soda waters, the kind that hissed and wheezed when he held a glass full to his ear and sent tangy bubbles galloping across his tongue with every gulp. Frank had his heart set on inventing the yummiest, most thirst-quenching, lip-smacking soda water drink ever. Hmm. What's your favorite flavor of soda? Are you a Coke drinker or a Sprite drinker? Do you like grape flavor or orange? So off Frank would go to the corner store to buy the flavored soda water powders that he needed for his experiments and often with his little brother Cray tagging along. Here's the storekeeper saying, Hey Big Ep, hi Little Ep. Cray was a handy taster for Frank's concoctions. Some of his attempts were unsuccessful. You could even say they were disastrous, but Frank just kept on trying. Here's the next experiment. This one is how to make your own lemon flavored soda water. Very cool. One day, Frank and the other children in his neighborhood decided to build a miniature amusement park. There was a theater, a merry-go-round, and a scenic railway. Frank was assigned the soda water stand, which suited him just fine. He could share his soda water creations with all his friends. Wow, that looks like fun, doesn't it? Wouldn't it be fun to create something like this in your backyard this summer? It kind of looks like a lemonade stand to me. 
it was also around this time that something peculiar happened. The temperature dipped, then plunged. This would not have been unusual had Frank lived in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, or Pocatello, Idaho, where it could be bitterly cold in winter. But he lived in San Francisco, California, where only rarely did the temperature drop below freezing. So, Frank tried another experiment. He left a glass of his flavored soda water outside overnight. See, he's wondering again. I wonder what this drink will taste like frozen. Hmm. When he woke the next morning, Frank ran to his back porch to discover his soda water had frozen solid. He could no longer sip it. He had to lick it like a lollipop. Hot dog! Frank had invented a frozen drink on a stick. As he grew older, Frank's invention did not melt from his memory. He just tucked it away in a corner of his mind. And there it stayed while he and his sweetheart, Mary Frances, began raising their gaggle of children. One, two, three, four, five kids. Woo. But when Frank noticed more and more people eating chocolate-covered ice cream bars, off he went to his laboratory, now his garage, to experiment. He's wondering again, hmm, could I make money with my frozen drink invention? Hmm, what if I used fruit juices? Frank found a way to make many of his drinks on a stick at the same time, with test tubes to mold them with wooden sticks to hold them, and a cool way to freeze them. Hot dog! For Frank streaks on a stick to freeze, they had to be cold, very cold, colder than 0% Celsius or 32, 32 degrees Celsius. Okay. Back up. For Frank's drinks on a stick to freeze, they had to be cold, very cold, colder than zero degrees Celsius, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the freezing point of water. Why? Because their ingredients, like sugar and flavoring, lowered their freezing point. So what did Frank do? He built a freezing box that held dozens of test tubes suspended in a mixture of crushed ice and salt. Frank knew that salt lowered the freezing point of water, and that salty water froze at a much lower temperature than plain tap water. The salt and ice mixture would be colder than zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. wonder how he knew that. Hmm. I bet he did some experiments. Maybe like this one, huh? Frank's drinks on a stick also had to freeze quickly. If they froze too slowly, the sugar and flavoring, which were heavier than water, just settled at the bottom of the test tubes, leaving just flavorless frozen water at the top. Frank wanted his treats to have the same tasty flavor throughout. The salt and crushed ice mixture surrounding the test tubes was so cold, it froze the liquid inside the tubes in minutes. Whoa, he says, frozen already? Look here, here's another experiment. This one says how to make your own frozen treat in only five minutes. Wow, pretty cool, huh? Frank named his invention the Epp Sickle. Remember his last name was Epperson? He began selling it for a nickel at county fairs and beaches. In the evenings, his children helped him roll the nickels he had earned. 
Frank had a clever way to encourage shop owners to sell his frozen treats. For several weeks in a row, he sent one of his children into a store to buy an Epsicle. Each week, the shop owner had to tell a different child that Epsicles were not sold in his store. Frank would then visit the store himself and ask the shop owner to stock his treats. Of course the owner agreed. I mean, he had had so many requests. Frank's children were always keen or eager to sample their father's confections. A confection is a sweet treat. And with all of them clamoring for their pop's tasty fabrications, in time, the name of Frank's invention changed to, all right, here's a hint, Pop, can we have a sickle? Orange is my favorite. Pop, can we have a sickle? Did you guess what he changed the name to? The Popsicle. That's how it got its name. Well, at the very end of this book, if you'd like to hear more information about Frank Epperson and some of his other inventions, you can read about them right here. Plus, you can see some real-life pictures of him and some of his family members. There's also a little bibliography in the back that shows where the author got her information so that we know the facts are true. And some other books by the same author. Today in Seesaw, you are going to invent some new popsicle flavors for summer. I'll see you at Seesaw. Bye-bye.